Welcome to the Holistic Living Podcast, my beautiful friends. You can expect my uncensored, real, and honest thoughts on a wide variety of health topics. If you love to learn on ways to improve your health, your life, your mindset, your emotions, and everything in between in a natural way, you are in the right place, and I am so excited to have you here. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 31 of the Holistic Living Podcast. Today I have a different topic for you. We are actually talking about clutter, minimalism, how it can affect your energy, your mood, your productivity. This is a bit different than what we're normally talking about here, but it really does play into health because I find that a big barrier for so many people is either lack of time, energy or just having constant anxiety and they're not able to do all the things that they need to do for their health as a result and I have a really great solution for so many people and I wanted to dive into that today so we're going to talk about minimalism we're going to talk about having too much clutter I'm going to share some tips with you that really worked for me um, to reducing clutter and boosting my energy my productivity my time and so much more So the first thing I want to start off with is that there have been countless studies that have assessed people's mood and energy levels and their productivity, and they have found, researchers have discovered in multiple studies, that if you have too many things, so too much uh, clutter, too many objects in sight, if there's a mess, people who were living in a messy environment or just again having too many things had significantly and measurably more difficult time being productive so their productivity was a lot lower and then the less productive productive that they became the more clutter they formed so the more messier the house got or the environment the messier the desk things like that so it's kind of like this vicious cycle or loop and other studies found that clutter can actually make you feel more stressed and anxious and it can also make you feel angrier as well and less energetic. So this is really, really important because a huge part of uh, of our health, a big thing that we're always trying to do is first and foremost, reduce our stress and anxiety because that's obviously no good for our health and our nervous system. It affects our sleep, it affects our relationships, it affects our gut and and so much more. So we do need to manage our stress and anxiety, but more importantly, we physically need to have energy, have productivity, have extra time to make healthier meals and to eat cleaner and to take our supplements and to exercise and move our bodies and all that good stuff. If we do not have enough time or we just don't feel like doing something because we're so tired or we're just not in a productive mood, then these health things will not get done and it's really going to hinder our our health in the long run. The biggest thing I found when you have clutter is besides the lack of energy and anxiety and all the things that come with it, the biggest thing I found was losing a lot of time. Now, this will depend on the each person. Everyone is so different. Some people will have clutter and it will not phase them and they, you know, none of this applies. Other people will have clutter and they don't like it, but they also won't do anything about it. So it's not taking up a lot of their time trying to clean. Others have clutter and then their kids are kind of just making a mess all the time and they're continuously cleaning. I was like that for a long time. I'll explain what I mean and stick with me here. I think this will come together. I think you'll get some good information and some good tips through this, but I grew up, I have six siblings and we grew up in a small home. So our home was beautiful and we were so blessed, but for the amount of kids and people living in the home, it wasn't a huge space. And so naturally seven kids with seven bikes and skateboards and toys and games and and clothes and shoes and boots in a small, small home, you can imagine how cluttered it became quite quickly. And I always was like from as long as I can remember so four and beyond I was always of that personality and like that mindset that I wanted less clutter and I was I would literally go through the house trying to throw stuff out all the time because I was like there's just too much stuff and I just felt anxious so that is just naturally my personality I also have OCD which might have developed from childhood who knows but either way currently I do have OCD and I, I really am like more of a minimalist mindset but anyway coming back to when I was growing up There was always so much stuff around. And I remember my mom was always like, you know, you guys have to tidy up before you can eat. You guys have to clean your rooms before you fall asleep and things like that. Everything that 
you know, a normal parent would request or require. And I felt because there was always so much stuff. And I mean, we were messy kids. We were always playing and making messes everywhere. All we were doing or a big part of what we were doing was cleaning. And that brought me to when I became a parent and, you know, my kids were being gifted toys left, right and center at Christmas and birthdays. And we were buying them stuff and just the the clutter very, very quickly crept up. And you think you need every toy, every gadget for your baby. And so little by little, your house is full of stuff. And what I realized was what my mom was, you know, kind of going through back in the day was our entire day is literally cleaning and picking up because there's so much stuff. It's there's more to make a mess with. And I got to the point where when I was going back to school and I had, you know, three kids and all this stuff, I was like, I can't keep up spending hours a day just cleaning. Like it's too much. So that's where I was like officially threw myself into the minimalist lifestyle. I don't, you know, have like the, not that you have to have the minimalist aesthetic with like the modern furniture and things like that. It's more of the concept of less is more. And so slowly I started getting rid of everything. And it's funny because I just had a baby last year, my fourth, and I literally bought him two things in terms of like, it was a car seat. I actually was, was gifted a car seat. Uh, my friend let me use theirs. So technically that doesn't even count, but, and, and a playpen as well. My sister let me borrow. So those don't even count, but like, that's literally all I, all I got. I was like, we already had an extra saucer at home and we had some bottles from the other kids. So like he, I had so little, but it's funny because my first I probably, I, my apartment was full to the brim. I had to put stuff in storage and I had to put stuff at my mom's house just from my baby shower alone because you think you need everything. And it's just such a difference. Like going through the minimalist journey, I was like, there's too much stuff. We just can't do it. And we love it because you know what? There's their babies for such a small amount of time and they use their bumbo a couple times. They use their extra saucer a few times. They use their toy mat a couple times and then it's done so you know to spend money on every little thing I find is not just a waste of money and then also just adding to the landfills and all this stuff but it really just takes up so much space in your home for something that will be barely used so what I ended up doing was I would say a good six years ago um, after my third daughter before I had my fourth probably seven years ago actually I went through everything that we owned and I got rid of clothes that we you don't wear frequently if, if we haven't worn it in a couple months it's gone shoes same thing I used to hold on to clothes and shoes that my kids used to wear because I was very sentimental and I just donated those as well um, holding on to old files and things gone I got rid of pretty much everything I don't really have knickknacks in the home I'll have a couple cute candles a throw pillow or a throw blanket but we don't have like bookshelves of just knickknacks and and, and things like that everything is just gone even on my kitchen counter, we have our espresso machine. I have a couple jars to, with my tea bags in it and a stand mixer. And like, that's it. I used to have a lot of decor and things like that, that I was just dusting and moving to clean under them all the time. And it, it again, it got to the point where I was like, enough's enough. It's too much. So now instead of spending hours every day picking up the same toys that the kids keep dumping out or sweeping or moving all of these objects to dust and you know clean behind them it's just a few things so it takes you instead of hours maybe 30 minutes a day to tidy up collectively so it gave me so much more time and that's actually how I found my time to start my business it's kind of funny because I started my business about seven years ago and at that time I was like it's impossible there is no time for me to start a business take care of all the kids clean the house And then I looked around and I was like, wait, we just have too much stuff. If I get rid of stuff, I won't have to be picking up as much and cleaning as much. And it worked. It honestly saved me hours of time. And then those couple hours is what I used to actually start my business and put energy into it. So it was very productive. But another thing is the anxiety aspect. When you have a lot of distractions and a lot of stuff in your eyesight, in your vision, like what you can see, it, 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 creates like literally a scramble in your head you cannot organize your thoughts now there are a few people who actually thrive in chaos um and they actually want the disorder but majority of people don't have that and majority of people they might not realize it but if they had a really clean tidy organized and minimal space they would have a clear empty (laughs) mind to actually focus on the tasks at hand they would be a lot more productive at work at home wherever 
And so reducing your clutter was a huge thing for for myself and it's something that I, I tell everyone to do. It's huge to reduce your stress and anxiety. The first thing I do when I come home, if there's like a mess, you know, if I if I'm out, you know, taking the kids to errands or if I'm, you know, working and then I come home, if the kids have made a mess and I come home to a mess, there's no cooking dinner. There's no sitting down to work until I first organize and tidy up. Once my house is tidy, I can sit and I am like, I can do a thousand tasks in a minute. If there's clutter, I'm, I'm cranky. I can, can't focus. I cannot come up with any good ideas. I can't even think of what to cook for dinner. It's, it's that noticeable. And most people are like that and might just not realize. And they're like, why am I always anxious? Why do I not have time? Why is my energy so low? And it's actually stuff that is sucking our energy. It seems, you know, kind of crazy, but it's the truth. It's how it works. So I want to encourage you guys to think about this and kind of look around your space and say, what is in the space that I truly use, love and cherish? And what is just there because I have it? What can I donate? What and, and we're not trying to throw things out here. We're trying to take something that maybe you don't have joy for anymore and give it to someone else. If you, there's a uh, a good shop that you can donate things to in your area, you know that's great. If you have um, any kind of um, there's usually like used toy drives or anything like that, you can just find things in places in your area to donate things to. In my area, it's either Goodwill, Value Village, or there's a St. Vincent de Paul, which really is great for supporting homeless. And so I will just, yeah, take something to those areas, to those places and and clear and clutter. And we do this seasonally. So another thing that I want to uh, give you a tip for Now, this is always going to look different for everyone, but for myself, we go through seasonal purges as well. So I'll back up a step. Christmas was the thing I found to be the most stressful. I loved and appreciated the gifts that my children would get. And thankfully, you know, we have such a large family, which I love. With that comes a lot of gifts and presents. And when you multiply it among three or four kids, it can really add up. And they would get so spoiled at Christmas, we would be bringing van loads back home. And... A huge thing for me was, first of all, guilt. I felt bad for people spending so much money on my children. But secondly, I felt bad my children having so much stuff. And then there's so many kids in the world who don't have anything. And thirdly, I felt really bad that they were going to play with whatever they got once, twice, maybe three, four times, and then probably not want to play with it again. Or it would break and then we'd throw it out. So then I was thinking about the waste. I was thinking about, you know, them not actually appreciating what they have when there's so much you know the more you have the less you appreciate it the more you take it for granted so those were my first thoughts it wasn't even the clutter that got me to start trying to decrease Christmas but the clutter was also a huge thing because we would after Christmas we would be in piles of of toys and things that I would be having to pick up because you know the kids either wouldn't or they would say oh we cleaned and then they didn't and I would still be finding pieces everywhere so What I ended up doing and actually requesting my family to do is do experiences, which I said, instead of buying them toys, you know, you want to spoil my children, you want to get them something, I'm so grateful. Is it possible to do an experience so we can go do something as a family, make memories, have an amazing time, but then not have to bring clutter home, not have to bring plastic into the home, not have to um, kind of buy into this consumerism that is what Christmas is all about these days. And everyone actually loved the idea. And it was so great because last Christmas, you know, we took our kids with my my si- my sister and her kids to Legoland. We did so many outings. It was the best time. The kids still to this day have amazing memories of that. But there's none of that clutter and all that stuff that comes with it. So seasonally, we started looking at our life and saying, like, where can we decrease? Where can we balance it out? And we started with Christmas. That was really important for me because that's where majority of the clutter came from throughout the year. The second thing was birthdays. So now for birthdays as well, what we try to do is again, my children are getting older, so it's more fun for them to actually get money. So if someone wants to give a gift, I'm like, they actually happily will take money or gift cards because they love going and spending their own money. They like buying themselves things. So that's a great way, you know, to again, reduce the clutter, but still have the children receive gifts or um, what we did as well as experiences. So I was asking people, take them on a date for sushi or you know if you want to do an experience say like for my daughter tell her she's going for high tea and take her out for high tea so they are getting again awesome gifts that they're so excited about but it's something that they can enjoy and make memories with the family 
So now they still do get toys. I don't want people to think it's like this boring Christmas where there's nothing fun. They still will get Lego and they'll still get toys, but it's more like one or two things. It's not going to be unwrapping 10 plus boxes at Christmas of crazy amount of toys. I just don't believe in that. And I don't think that that's what Christmas is about or should be about, Uh, especially for us. We know Christmas is about the birth of Jesus and I want that to always be the focus. So For my family, it's sure, here's some presents, here's some experiences, you know, maybe a little bit of cash, whatever it is. But the biggest thing is it's not about the presents. And I found that when the children were just receiving presents, 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 mainly toys, it just became like, what's next? What's next? They would unwrap one box to the next, not even caring what was in the previous box because they just were so excited about getting stuff. So it also helps not just with clutter, but it's helping like the children mentally. It's it's helping them appreciate what they have there's so many benefits to doing this and then in terms of other seasonal decluttering what we do every year is with every season so say for example we're moving from summer to fall and winter and we start getting rid of like the flip-flops and and the summer clothes and the swimsuits I use it just pack it all up into a box and then put it in the attic or or even just keep it in their rooms now we go through every piece of clothing if it does not fit them or will not fit them by next summer, it's gone. So we don't even keep it in the house. It will donate it. If they're they're too worn or old to donate, we'll toss them in the garbage. And this also then keeps you from having to store space for everything throughout the winter and the fall or vice versa. And at the same time, you know what they need then when that season returns. So if I threw out my daughter's flip-flops because they were old and out, she kind of outgrew them, then I know that next summer she's going to need a new pair of flip-flops. If you're still holding on to everything, you're going to have to then go through it all at that point. And then when summer's here and you're like, oh, those don't fit you anymore, you're kind of scrambling to go and buy everything at that time. So it's a nice way to save yourself time, again, to declutter and keep the stash in the home at a minimum. So every season will kind of go through their stuff. I do not hold on to things anymore. If I think I'm going to have another baby, like when I had my first Um, shortly after, like I had three kids under three years. So it was a very short period where I was having kids. So I did hold on to stuff. But when I realized that like I was having a girl and previously I had two boys, I donated all my boy stuff. Or when I realized that my sons were going to be born in opposite seasons. And so the clothes probably wouldn't really line up. I donated what I thought wouldn't end up fitting the boys. So I kind of just based it off of that. But currently, I no longer hold on to anything. Anything my baby, who is now one, has outgrown or no longer plays with or uses, it's donated. And if a baby ever shows up in the future, it'll just be getting a couple new things for him or her. But that's how we're doing it. We're not holding on to anything. I'm not keeping anything in case of. It's it's gone. We're keeping our home simple and minimal. And especially we will be moving, I'm hoping sooner than later, the thought of having to pack hundreds and hundreds of boxes is very stressful as well. So the le- the more I get rid of now, the less stress that I have. Another thing that I do is besides the seasonal elimination, so clothes, skates that don't fit anymore, gloves, hats that are ripped or old or whatever, besides that turnover, I also do kitchen turnover as well. So if there are gadgets in my kitchen that someone gifted me or that I bought thinking I'd need and do not use within a few months, I also get rid of it. So I find like potato peelers that like I never, ever, ever touch because I have one that I really love and the rest are gone. So I just kind of have one of everything for like the main kitchen tools. Same with pots and pans. If there's ones that I haven't used in years, it's gone. There's no need to hold on to it. I had a waffle maker and I had a a counter like panini press. Both, I mean, they were probably coated in like toxic Teflon, whatever. So I didn't love that anyway, but I never used them. Like probably once every three, four years I would use it. And so they were just taking up space in my cupboard. And so I donated and that's how it goes. And you can do that with every bit of your life. Same thing in the bathroom. Like you can collect, I don't even know, toothbrushes, hair elastics, like things just build up. And then you're kind of sitting there like, when did all this stuff get here? And so you got to clear it out. If you have that messy drawer that most people seem to have in their home full of chargers and random miscellaneous objects, go through it, organize it. Majority of stuff is probably garbage or can be donated. Once you get to a point where you've completely cleaned out your home and you it's very organized and tidy, then you can start going to objects like knickknacks or souvenirs or things that you've had forever that maybe don't purpose you anymore and start clearing those out too. What I was doing was there was a bunch of throw blankets that I, you know, bought a long time ago. I loved the look of, but they were either faded or ripped a little bit or frayed. 
and they just kind of looked ratty, <laughs> I started getting rid of them and throwing them out because I was like, there's no point in holding on to it. And uh, if there's a lot of books that I don't read anymore, I donate as well. I used to try to hold on to books and kind of build a library. And now I'm like, what's the point? I know there is value in books and a lot of people love having the physical books. But for me, I don't even have time to sit and really read a good book anymore. It's probably going to be an audiobook, So I'm just going to donate, especially when they're a one-time read. So Nicholas Sparks was something that I always loved to read just for fun and in passing. But I'm like, you're going to read it once. You don't need to read it twice. So again, that's where I would donate. The only books I actually hold on to are like my my holistic health books that I reference, you know, frequently. But everything else, I'm like, there's just no point in keeping. So anyway, I know it's a big ramble, this podcast. I didn't really have notes to to go off of, but just sharing some things that you can think about, maybe some an area in your home you haven't cleaned that you can kind of start looking through. Um, that was one other thing we did was, I don't know why I was doing this, but I was holding on to rags. So like old towels, tablecloths. I was like, oh, the kids could paint on this tablecloth or we could use this towel, cut it up in a rag when we need a rag. And I ended up having like, big cardboard boxes full of rags and so I was like why the heck am I holding on to this stuff I got rid of it all I now had so much more space in my linen closet for actually organizing my linens neatly and and by color and all that stuff so same thing with candles and like you can just get to a point where you hold on to things because you think you might need them we actually were doing that with firewood I you know last summer winter I mean we were using our fireplace a lot and we were also doing a lot of bonfires in the summer so there was our neighbor was having free wood and trying to get rid of it and I was like sure go get it we made a huge pile of wood and then I realized after like that winter was over we barely touched it even though we were doing a lot of fires and stuff like we just got way more than we need and it's just gonna sit outside and rot and I'm like we're not even even probably going to do too many fires this year so I'm like, let's get rid of it. Let's just put a sign for free firewood and give it to someone else because there's no point in us holding on to something that we're not going to use too much. And so life becomes a lot simpler, a lot cleaner, a lot happier, more productive. There's more energy. There's less anxiety. You're not continuously picking up a thousand different things. Obviously, when you have kids, there's still dirty floors, there's still dust, there's still messes, and that will always have to be cleaned. But at least you're not picking up and dusting a hundred different objects all the time. So I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you got some ideas of areas in your home to declutter and to uh, eliminate. You will be shocked at how much space you have once you actually start getting rid of things you don't need. And you'll be like, oh my goodness, I actually have room in my storage closet or on our shoe rack or wherever because you got rid of so much stuff that just naturally builds, especially, especially when you have kids. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this random topic, but I promise you it does relate to health, especially if this is what you're using to improve your anxiety, get more productive so you can do more for your health and then have more time as well. This will work. Um, And if you think, you know, my house isn't cluttered, I don't really have a lot of stuff. Maybe you don't, but a lot of times we have more than we realize and just opening a drawer, you can look and say, wait, there's a lot of stuff in here I don't need or, you know, looking at your desk, maybe there's things you don't need. So I encourage you and challenge all of you who are listening to try to find one area, one drawer, one room, one closet in your room to clean out, organize and eliminate from. And I think it's going to make a huge difference in how you feel and how how much time and anxiety and all of that that you have hope you have a beautiful day or night wherever you are listening from and i will talk to you in the next episode Bye.